Hello, good morning. I hope you're fine today. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about this very, very famous statement of Jesus where he says, give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. Now the question is, what does this mean? Um, this, this, this reference, this statement is taken from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 12, from verses 13 to 17. So what was happening here? is that the enemies of Jesus had gathered together and they came to meet Jesus and asked him, holding a coin in their hand, and they asked him, should we pay taxes to Caesar or not? And they had expected him to say either yes or no. Whether if he said yes, they would accuse him of um, not being in solidarity with his people and being in uh, solidarity with the oppressors. And if he had said no, they would have said, oh, you see, he is not supporting the Roman leadership and then he would have been in trouble with the authorities. So either way, Jesus was going to be in trouble. And Jesus answered them, whose uh, effigy, whose image is in the, is on the coin. And then he said, well, it's the image of Caesar. And he says, yeah, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. So here are three things we can draw from this uh, scripture passage. The first one is that never answer a complex question with a simple yes or no. Never answer a complex question with a simple yes or no. That's because complex questions require deep thinking and deeper answers. So when someone comes to you with a question that's loaded, a question that's complex, take your time to breathe, to think, and to respond. Breathe, think, and respond. So never say yes or no to a complex question. The second thing is that... Um, there is a place for Caesar in our society. There has to be a place for Caesar in our society. Caesar, of course, stands for taxes. Caesar stands for the state. Caesar stands for our socioeconomic lives. Caesar stands for everything that is not within the domain of the spiritual. You see, I like to say this particularly for our friends in Africa, for my brothers and sisters in Nigeria. It's very, very important to leave Caesar his place. Look, we cannot tithe or pray our way to socioeconomic development. We have to go out and vote, we have to hold our leaders accountable, we have to pay our taxes, we have to do good business. Listen, we cannot hope to pray and then God will come and solve all of our problems for us. Instead of building um, more churches, we should think also of building more schools. Instead of building bigger churches, we should, we should also think of building bigger industries because there has to be a place for Caesar. God has, the heaven is God's throne and the earth he has given to men. God has given us a place and we have to play our parts. Our parts. So it's important this morning to remind ourselves again that there has to be a place for Caesar. There has to be a socio-economic, political, human domain where we take responsibility for our destiny. The third and final thing I'd like to say is that there has to also be a place for God. Yes, there has to be a place for God. In uh, some Western societies where uh, the state, the welfare state, or the, uh, any of these ideologies has tried to replace God, we all know that the result was catastrophic. So we must learn to have a deep relationship with God. We must give God his place. We must give God his due. We must worship God. We must have a relationship with God. That's very important to give meaning to our lives because we are meaning-seeking beings. It's only God that gives our lives direction as in where we are coming from and where we are heading to after this our life. So it's important to give God his place and to know that the place of God cannot be replaced by any human, psychological, philosophical system or even ideology. So child of God, what I want to say in summary this morning is first, don't respond to quest complex questions with simple answers. Secondly, let's give Caesar his seat. Let's not put God on Caesar's seat. It's too small for him. Let's make sure that Caesar is on his seat and doing his job. And thirdly, let us make sure that God has his place in our lives. This is the only way we're going to be able to create a new heaven and a new earth after this COVID-19. As St. Peter tells us in the second letter this morning, chapter 3 from verses 12 to 18, what we're waiting for is a new heaven and a new earth, a place where righteousness will be at home. In this kingdom, all of us are going to have to play our part. I pray this morning that God will bless us. He will fill our hearts with his goodness and give us true reasons to be joyful all through the rest of the day. We don't want to God bless you. He who is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.